ओम श्री साई राम श्री साई सचरित रिटर्न बाई हेमत पंजी एंड ट्रांसलेटेड बाई गुना जी चैप्टर नाइन्थ एट द एंड ऑफ द लास्ट चैप्टर इट वॉज बेरली स्टेटेड दैट द बक्तास हु ओबेड बाबास ऑर्डर्स एट द टाइम ऑफ टेकिंग लीव फेड वेल एंड दोज हु डिसोबेड them suffered many a mishap this statement will be amplified and illustrated with a few striking instances and by other matters dealt with in this chapter characteristic of shirdi pilgrimage one special peculiarity of shirdi pilgrimage was that was this that none could leave shirdi without baba's permission and if he did he invited untold sufferings but if any one was asked to quit shirdi he could stay there no longer baba gave certain suggestions or hints when bhaktas went to bid good bye and take leave these suggestions had to be followed if they were not followed or were departed from accidents were sure to befall them who acted contrary to baba's directions we give below a few instances tatya kote patil tatya kote was once going in a tonga to kopargaon bazaar he came in haste to the masjid saluted baba and said that he would go to kopargaon bazaar baba said don't make haste stop a little let go the bazaar don't go out of the village on seeing his anxiety to go baba asked him to take shama that is madhavrao deshpande at least with him not minding this direction tatya koti immediately drove his tonga of the two horses one which cost 300 rupees was very active and restless after passing saul well it began to run rashly got a sprain in its waist and fell down Tatya was not much hurt but was reminded of mother sai's direction on another occasion while proceeding to kolhar village he disregarded baba's direction and drove in a tonga which met with a similar accident european gentleman one european gentleman of bombay once came to shirdi with an introductory note from nana sahib chendokar and with some object in view he was comfortably accommodated in a tent he wanted to kneel before baba and kiss his hand therefore he tried thrice to step into the masjid but baba prevented him from doing so he was asked to sit in the open courtyard below and take baba's darshan from there not pleased with this reception he got he wanted to leave shirdi at once and came to bid good bye baba asked him to go to the next day and not to hurry people also requested him to abide by baba's direction not listening to all this he left shirdi in a tonga the horses ran at first all right but when saul well was passed a bicycle came in front seeing which the horses were frightened and ran fast the tonga was turned topsy turvy and the gentleman fell down and was dragged some distance He was immediately re- released but had to go and lie in Kopargaon hospital for the treatment of the injuries. 
Because of such experiences, all people learnt the lesson that those who disobeyed Baba's instruction met with accidents in one way or the other, and those who obeyed them were safe and happy. The necessity of mendicancy. Now to return to the question of mendicancy, a question may arise in the minds of some that if Baba was such a great personage, God in fact, why should he have recourse to the begging bowl all his lifetime? This question may be considered and replied from two standpoints. Who first one, who are the fit persons who have a right to live by the begging bowl? Our Shastras say that those persons who getting rid of or becoming free from the three main desires, that is, first one for progeny, second for wealth, third for fame, accept sannyas or the fit persons to live by begging arms. They cannot make cooking arrangements and dine at home. The duty of feeding them rests on the shoulders of householders. Sai Baba was neither a householder nor Vanaprastha. He was a celibate sannyasi, that is, sannyasi from boyhood. His firm conviction was that the universe was his home. He was the Lord Vasud Vasudio the supporter of the universe and the imperishable Brahma. So, he had the full right to have recourse to the begging bowl. Second, now from the standpoint of first one, Panchasun, that is five sins and other, their atonement. We all know that in order to prepare foodstuffs and meals, the, the householders have to go through five actions or processes. That is, one, kandani, that is pounding. Second one, peshani, grinding. Third one, udakumbi, washing pots. Fourth one, Marjani, sweeping and cleaning. Fifth one, Chuli, that is lighting hearts. These processes involve destruction of a lot of small insects and creatures, and thus the householders incur a lot of sin. In order to atone for this sin, our Shastras prescribe five kinds of sacrifices that is 1. Brahma Yajna 2. Vedadhyaya, Vedadhyayan that is offerings to Brahman or the study of the Vedas 3. one, Pitra Yajna that is offerings to the ancestors 4. one. Deva Yajna, that is, offerings to the gods. Fifth one, Bhuta Yajna, that is, offerings to the beings. Sixth one, Manushya Atidi Yajna, that is, offerings to men or uninvited guests. If these sacrifices enjoyed by the Shastras or duly performed, the purification of their minds is affected and this helps them to get knowledge and self-realization. Devotees' Experiences Now to return to the other more interesting subject. Lord Krishna has said in the Bhagavad Gita, that is 9 to 26 verses, Whoso, Whosoever devotely offers to me a leaf, a flower, or a fruit or water, 
of that pure-hearted man, I accept that pious offering. In the case of Sahi Baba, if a devotee really longed to offer anything to Sahi Baba and if he afterwards forgot to offer the same, Baba reminded him or his friend about the offering and made him present it to him and then accepted it and blessed the devotee. A few instances are given below. Tharkad family that is father and son, Mr. Ramachandra Atmaran alias Baba Sahib Tharkad, formerly a Prarthana Samajist, was a staunch devotee of Sai Baba. His wife and son loved Baba equally or perhaps more. It was once proposed that Master Tarkhad should go with his mother to Shirdi and spend his May vacation there. But the son was unwilling to go as he thought that in case he left his home at Bandra, the worship of Sai Baba in the house would not be properly attended to as his father being a Prarthana Samajist would not care to worship Sai Baba's enlarged portrait. However, on his father's giving an assurance of oath that he would perform the worship exactly as the son was doing, the mother and the son left for Shirdi on one Friday night. Next day, Saturday, that is Saturday, Mr. Tarkat got up early, took his bath and before proceeding with the puja, prostrated himself before the shrine and said, Baba, I am going to perform the puja exactly as my son has been doing, but please let it not be a formal drill. After he performed the puja, he offered a few pieces of lump sugar as naivedya, that is offering, which were distributed at the time of the lunch. That evening and on Sunday, everything went on well. The following Monday was a working day and it also passed well. Mr. Tarkhad, who had never performed puja, like this in all his life, felt great confidence within himself that everything was passing on quite satisfactorily according to the promise given to his son. On Tuesday, he performed the morning puja as usual and left for his work. Coming home at noon, he found that there was no prashad or sugar to partake of. When the meal was served, he asked the servant, that is cook, who told him that there was no offering made that morning and that he had completely forgotten then to perform that part of the puja, that is, offering naivedya. After hearing that, he left his seat and prostrated himself before the shrine, expressed his regret at the same time chiding Baba for the want of guidance in making the whole affair a matter of mere drill. Then he wrote a letter to his son, stating the facts and requested him to lay it before Baba's feet and ask his pardon for his neglect. This happened in Bandra at Tuesday noon. At about the same time, when the noon arati was just about to commence in Shirdi, Baba said to Mrs. Tarkar, Mother, I had been to your house in Bandra with a view to having something to eat. I found the door locked. I somehow got an entrance inside and found to my regret that Bhau, that is Mr. Tarkar, had left nothing for me to eat. 
so i have returned from there without eating anything the lady could not understand anything but the son who was close by understood that there was something wrong with the puja in bandra and he therefore requested baba to permit him to go home baba refused the permission but allowed him to perform puja there then the son wrote a letter to his father stating all that took place at shirdi and implored his father not to neglect the puja at home both these letters crossed each other and were delivered to the respective parties the next day is this not astonishing mrs tharkar let us now take up the case of mrs tharkar herself she offered three things that is one bharit that is roasted brinjal eggplant mixed curds and spice second one khacharya that is circular pieces of brinjal fried in ghee third one peda that is sweet meat ball let us see how baba accepted them once mr raghuveer baskar purandari of bandra a great devotee of baba started for shirdi with his family mrs tarkar went to mrs purandari and gave her two brinjals and requested her to prepare bharit of one bring brinjal and kacharya of the other when she went to shirdi and served baba with them after reaching shirdi mrs purandari mrs purandari went with her dish of bharit to the masjid when baba was just about to start his meals baba found the bharit very tasty so he distributed it to all and said that he wanted kacharyas now a word was sent to radha krishna mai that baba wanted kacharyas she was in a fix as that was so as that was no season of brinjals how to get brinjals was the question when an inquiry was made as to who brought the bharit it was found that mrs purandari was also interested with the duty of serving kacharyas everybody then came to know the significance of baba's inquiry regarding kacharyas and was wonder struck at baba's all pervasive knowledge in december 1915 one govind balram mankar wanted to go to shirdi to perform the obsequies of his father before he left he came to see mr tarkard then mrs tarkard wanted to send something with him to baba she searched the whole house but found nothing except a peda which had already been offered as naivedya mr mankar was in mourning still out of great devotion to baba she sent the peda with him hoping that baba would accept and eat it govind went to govind went to shirdi and saw baba but forgot to take the peda with him baba simply waited when again he went to baba in the afternoon he went empty handed without the peda baba could wait no longer and therefore asked him straight what did you bring for me he said nothing nothing was the reply baba asked him again the same reply came forth again then baba asked him the leading question did not the mother mrs tarkar give 
some sweet meat to you for me at the time of your starting the boy then remembered the whole thing he felt abashed asked baba's pardon ran to his lodging brought the padder and gave it to baba as soon as baba got it in his hand he put it into his mouth and gulped it down thus the devotion of mrs tharkard was recognized and accepted as men believe in me so do i accept them this is the verse in geeta 4 to 11 shlokas was proved in this case baba fed sumptuously how once mrs tarkar was staying in a certain house in shirdi at noon meals were ready and dishes were being served when a hungry dog turned up there and began to cry mrs tarkar caught up at once and threw a piece of bread which the dog gulped with great relish in the afternoon when she went to the masjid and sat at some distance sai baba said to her mother you have fed me sumptuously up to my throat my afflicted pranas that is life forces have been satisfied always act like this and this will stand you in good stead sitting is the, sitting in this masjid i shall never never speak untruth take pity on me like this first give bread to the hungry and then eat yourself note this well she could not at first understand the meaning of what baba said so she replied baba how could i feed you i am myself dependent on others and take my food from them on pay- payment then baba replied eating that lovely bread i am heartily contented and i am still belching the dog which you saw before meals and to which you gave the piece of bread is one with me so also other creatures that is cats pigs flies cows etc or one with me I am roaming in their forms. He who sees me in all these creatures is my beloved. So abandon the sense of duality and distinction and serve me as you did today. Drinking these nectar-like words, she was moved. Her eyes were filled with tears. Her throat was choked, and her joy knew no bounds. Moral. See God in all beings is the moral of this chapter. The Upanishads, the Gita, and the Bhagavad all exhort us to perceive God or divinity in all the creatures. By the instance given at the end of this chapter. and others too numerous to mention sai baba has practically demonstrated to us how to put the upanishadic teachings into practice in this way sai baba stands as the best exponent or teacher of the upanishadic do- doctrines bo to shri sai peace be to all om shri sai ram